Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. We are not meeting yet. We won't be able to meet through July. Uh, the building just decided that they wouldn't open. So please don't stop by until we open up again. Um, this video is about 2012 and what happened and why it seems to be a demarcation of our fall. Um, there's a lot of evidence for it, and I'd like you to stick through it and see. Um, I'm trying not to give you disparate information. I'm trying to make it logical um, and give you a philosophy of eschatology, which is a study of the end times. You know, what you need to know, what the reality is, why were you born for such a time as this, things like that. So, um, I usually put this at the end, but knowing your directions in terms of where the horses come from during the seals is really, really important. So Zechariah lists, lists the horses, then in um, six, so one, of course, he lists them, and six, he gives directions, and you can say, well, they're attached to chariots. Well, that's war. Either way, it's war patterns, and the directions are very accurate, so just keep that in mind as you're you know, looking at the end times that Zechariah 6 is an important section to look at. So, uh, as always, I believe Western civilization is falling apart. That's the West from Seal 1, and it happened after 1967. If you look today, it's falling apart. Um, you know for sure it's falling apart, but it's been falling apart for 50 years, people, and then some. Seal 2 is the Bush Wars, east of Jerusalem. These are all the birth pangs. So you're going to say to me, Joel, we're not in the Great Tribulation. Well, you're thinking differently than I am. I hope I'm right. I believe that the birth pangs lead into the Great Tribulation, and there are some people that are starting to agree with me because the signs are there. Seal 3, you should see your food prices go through the roof, and so you should notice um, you should notice locusts everywhere, and that will play into this video too, and you should notice all sorts of storms and strange weather changes, guys, just strange weather. Seal 4, is from the south and so i'm going to try to prove that tonight we'll see if you like my conjecture martyrdom is coming up after a while that's seal five and then seal six you'll know when those things hit they're all the birth pangs now i'm not saying that i agree with this report but it is very interesting they're saying that the globalists have been telling us that there's going to be a reset in 2021 and it could still happen. It could happen this year, too, for that matter. But Christine Lagarde was, you know, joking about the magic number seven. And seven years after 2014, when she delivered that speech, is 2021. So they, they have a plan, and it could be economic disaster. I don't know. But we all are sensing that something is wrong, and a reset is due at some point in time. So, as always, I try not to twist the Bible. I try to give you real prophecy from the Bible and from modern-day prophets and try not to give you fake news. Um, try to give you accurate news. So, we're going to be dealing today with Gog Magog and the war as one of the signs because it's starting to happen right now. And I want to show you based on 2012, you know, how things were cut loose in 2011 in part. Um, and then they, they really fractured in 2012 in this particular area relating to the Gog Magog war. And I want you to be aware that a lot of people say because the word in Hebrew is Rosh, so he's the chief prince, the Rosh of, of Tuval, uh, that that means that he is from Russia. Even some Jewish rabbis agree with that. I would say if all of these locations happen to be in Turkey, that that's what he's talking about. And that's far north for biblical times, Gomer, Torgama, Mogog, uh, Meshek, Tuval. Um, you'll see that when I read the text in just a moment, um, that these are those locations for the Ezekiel 38 war. And I'm going to try to paint a case for that, that it's occurring right now based on a news story that you're going to see in just a few minutes here. So first of all, the chapter that you need to be aware of is Gog from Magog is the war at the end of tribulation. If, if you were going to do this in an hour, uh, it would be the 59th minute and the 59th second. So <laughs> it, would be, uh, it would be that far to the end um, on, on uh, Sukkot. So the word of Adonai came to me, human being, turn your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, Chief Prince Rosh of Meshek and Tuval, which are places in Turkey, uh, all three of those, and prophesy against him, say what Adonai Elohim says, I am against you, Gog, Chief Prince of Meshek and Tuval. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your army, horses and horsemen, all completely equipped, a great horde with breastplates and shields, all wielding swords, Paras, Ethiopia, and Put. Ah, uh, that's going to play in the day. You're going to see Put. So I'll, I'll tell you who Put is in just a second here, okay? Are with them, all with breastplates and helmets, Gomer with all their troops, the house of Torgoma, in the far reaches of the north, with all its troops, many peoples are with you. Continuing on, 
who is this go guy? Well, according to Amos 7 1 in the Septuagint, which is, you know, you have to be a brilliant guy. And this is uh, Daniel, Dr. Daniel Street, who discovered this. Many others have, I think. But Gog the grasshopper king. Okay? And in the Septuagint, it reads, you know, I'm just going to give you a couple of words. The first, the second line there is akridon, akridon, and that is a locust. Okay? And then the next line, the third line, it's Gog ho basileus. So Gog the king, okay? And so, uh, thus the Lord showed me, and behold, a swarm of locusts coming early, and behold, one locust, Gog the king. It's possible that the translator has seen in Amos 7, 1, a link to Joel's locust army, which comes from the north, same case in Joel 2.20, and thus linked to Ezekiel's Gog, which also comes from the north in Ezekiel 38.15. Of course, we could... Also have talked to Eldad and Medad. Now, he's joking here. Who gave him the inside scoop? Those are the men that prophesy in numbers. So he's he's a scholar, obviously. So he, he gets to use his version of humor that only a few of us get. Um, so I want you to always think about this. When you see locusts in the world, think that Gog is coming. Gog is perpetually linked to locusts and being the locust king. And you'll see that in chapter 9 of Revelation as these strange locust-like creatures come up from the uh, the underneath the world, the tahoma we say in the Greek, the abuso, um, or rather in the Hebrew it's tahom, in the Greek it's, it's abuso. And so um, at some point in time, you'll see gold uh, if you're around. So I want to give you a couple of verses just so you can see put and see where it is. Um, and I'm arguing that put is Libya. So, Genesis 10.6, it sets up the sons of Ham, which is Cush, and Mitzrayim, which is Egypt, and Put, which is Libya, and Canaan, which is, you know, that region where the, the Israelites settled. And then in First Chronicles 1.8, same thing, the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mitzrayim, Put, and Canaan. Then Jeremiah 46, this is very interesting. This sounds like Ezekiel 38, so you're going to read that a little bit. Or actually, we just read that, but you'll see more. Um, Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans, that's Put, that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. And there is this factor of bending the bow from Jeremiah 51, 1 through 3, that really is about um, America being bent. Uh, it's, it's, it's horrific uh, if you really dig into the Hebrew of Jeremiah 51, 1 through 3. Now, here's three passages of Put in Ezekiel. So they of Persia, the land of Lud, and Put, which were thine army, thy men of war, which hang the shield and helmet in thee, and they set forth thy comeliness. It's King James. Ethiopia and Lydia, which is, or Libya rather, <laughs> uh, which is Put and Lydia, and all the mingled people and Chub and the men of the land that is in league shall fall by them by the sword, with them by the sword. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, Put, with them, all of them, with shield and helmet, from Ezekiel 38.5, we just read that, and then Nahum 3.9, Ethiopia and, Le and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite, Put, and Lubum were thy helpers. So, I want to discuss this in terms of Egypt first is known as Egypt, but also the Mamluks took over it in kind of the Middle Ages. And then, but Put and Libya has always kind of stayed at that same name, and they haven't had as many dynasties involved in it. But I want you to be aware of the Mamluks and also the Ottomans. So the Ottomans are in the north side in Turkey that we talked about the Gog area, the Magog area. And, and so then, but the Mamluks, they are the owned, they are the slaves that conquered Egypt. And they were the warriors of medieval Islam. They overthrew their masters, defeated the Mongols and the Crusaders, and established a dynasty that lasted 300 years. And it matches up with the prophecy. So we'll see that. And I want you to see what's going on, the thought behind the thought. So here's the Mamluks, and from 1250 to 1517, and they were defeated in 1516, 1517, uh, by the Ottoman Turks, the Caliphate, and then the Caliphate grew. So just always remember another rule that's just very helpful as you understand history, that if you look at Egypt being the first kingdom, way off to the right-hand side, then Assyria, the first rule of thumb is to go into Egypt, the bank, defeat it, get all the food and the cash, and then go fight some more wars, because you can fight on full tummies much better than you can when you're hungry. So keep in mind, Babylon would go into Egypt first or early, you know, and Medo-Persia and Greece and all these countries, all these dynasties would go into Egypt as early as possible 
possible to be able to get food and money, cash. They're the bank. Okay, so ancient Egypt was always the bank because the Nile always flooded. So regardless of what was going on, it was the bank. You know, even for Joseph, it it was the bank. It was he was the 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 food of nations. You know, uh, for everyone. So and also the Mamluks were slaves that became the kings, but still slavery came out of that region. So um, just keep that in mind um, as you look through all the kingdoms that have occurred over history. Continuing on, this is created by me, but I want to show you the patterns, the biblical patterns. First to the bank, of course. In 1217, in the 77th year of living, Rabbi Judah ben Samuel prophesied of the Ten Jubilees, and he cited that the Ottomans would conquer Jerusalem in 1517. So there's a 300-year gap, which is basically relative to the Mamluks running uh, Jerusalem during that time frame which is six jubilees, then for eight jubilees from 1517 to 1917, the Ottomans would run things, and then peacefully, Allah Hanavi, that's Allenby, General Allenby, would walk in and take over in 1917 because they thought he was the prophet of Allah, Allah Hanavi. Then the Messianic age would begin after 2017. That was his prophecy. And, and then, so keep in mind that in 1516 and 1517, just before all of this, they came in, the Ottomans, into uh, and defeated the Mamluks, which is Mithraim in Egypt, and the Ottomans won. And so that's Megog area, Meshach and Tubal, okay? And I'm saying that this could happen again. So um, before the Ottomans conquered Jerusalem in 1517, which lasted exactly 400 years until 1917, they needed to defeat Mitzrayim, the Mamluks, first in 1516. On part two, uh, you'll see that Libya Put may have a hot war zone occurring right now. And I'm saying that this is very prophetic, okay? Uh, between the Ottoman Turks that are coming down and fighting against Mitzrayim, Egypt. And so just be aware that I just showed you those seven references to put. It's very interesting in terms of the biblical uh, context around each. So um, I think it's setting up the Gog Magog War. And I think we've seen it throughout history many, many, many times. So uh, this is Rabbi Judah ben Samuel's prophecy, which is the 1217, the 1517, which is, I believe, a jubilee year, of course, because you have Martin Luther's 95 Thesis down in the lower right-hand corner there of pictures, and then Judah ben Samuel's prophecies, and then 1967, you know about that. I don't know what happened in 2017, but it doesn't matter. I don't have to be a prophet. So the Ottoman Mamluk uh, were uh, they they really had wars from about 1485 to 1491, but then the Ottomans came back around 1516 and destroyed them, and so um, they defeated the Mamluks, and so then it became a caliphate after that. So once again, I'm saying that you go to Egypt first, you get your cash and your food, and then you go and grow your caliphate because you can grow based on that. And um, I'm saying now going forward, this is a little bit different, but we're going through the seals. So I, I mentioned already seal one should be the defeat of Western civilization, which you're experiencing, unfortunately. The second seal is east of Jerusalem based on Zechariah's six directions. So George Bush went into Iraq and then pushed around over there and destroyed and de de he destabilized to set up the oil companies to make a profit off this. And this is the, the Daily Mirror's article on it. You know, I shall not excerate Saddam Hussein from the blame. I will mobilize our troops and jets to... <laughs> it's just horrible. But you know what the Bushes did. Bush 1, Bush 2, they came in to destabilize east of Jerusalem. So that's seal 2 and the Bush oil wars. And what they did was they kicked the hornet's nest and it continued on. And it's not ending, people. Okay. Now, this is an article from yesterday. This really got me going about this, and I'm putting this video out based on this article from uh, this Zero Hedge, and I cite them all the time. And not only do they cite the title, so let me give you the title: CC's Declaration of War, Put, <laughs> which is Libya. <laughs> That's a pun, people. Egypt and Turkey on war footing over Libya. So you can see the Put listed twice there uh, with Libya and Put. And, and so what, what they're talking about is that there's a heated rhetoric with Egypt potentially beefing up forces and military hardware along its border with Libya. It has some regional sources saying that Turkey, which is Megog, and Egypt, Mitzrayim, are headed for a direct confrontation 
and a rapidly intensifying situation. Now, Egypt's president is signaling possible red lights in Libya. The J Post says this line could uh, now keep the Turkish past uh, GNA uh, from Sirte and the uh, strategic airfield at Eufra. The country would be split down the middle. Egypt has a massive army, but there's also an army most untested. So the rule of thumb is if I was going to attack some country today that had cash and a lousy army with conscripts, with, you know, rented uh, cops, I'd go after Saudi Arabia. That's why the United States has to protect them all day long, because they aren't really good fighters. Um, and they'll, you know, they'll run from a battle and they always have. And they have cash. OK, well, Egypt is kind of that way, too. They have not won many wars over the years, people. OK, they have lost many, many, many wars. And and this will happen again. So I'm seeing the third seal. We're going to talk about it more in just a minute here. But the third seal happened in 2012, and I'll give you my evidence for that. But the fourth seal seems to be from the south, and I'm saying it revolves around Put and Mitzrayim and Gog and Magog up north. And so I just want you to be aware of this article. So this is, once again, from 621 of 2020 from Tyler Durden, which is basically uh, Zero Hedge. Very interesting, people. Very, very interesting how this sets up the end times, potentially. Um, that would be, so you're saying right now China and India do want to go to war. Sure, yeah. Um, North Korea wants to go to war against South Korea. Yep, sure, uh-huh. Uh, uh, there are other wars going on across the world right now or setting up for wars. I think this is the hottest of the hot spot based on, uh, hot spots, based on biblical history. And, and I think you need to be aware of it. So there's Hillary um, back in 2011. So we're talking about 2012 and how things set up. So in 2011, she said, we came, we saw, he died. Ha, 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 ha. So um, what they did, they were wicked. Obama and Hillary were wicked in terms of kicking the Libyan hornet's nest. So remember, Bush kicked the hornet's nest east. Then they kicked it in 2011, which set up 2012 to right now. It just set off hell in that region. Libya has been hell um, if you're looking for slavery right now, if you really want to protest slavery, go to Libya right now and see how horrific it is. Um, and Egypt doesn't know what to do with how horrible it is. OK, so this is directly attributable to Hillary laughing and Obama allowing her to do whatever she wanted to do. And there's oil money behind this, too, obviously. So just keep that in mind. They wrecked Libya for a generation more than that. And this is actually the 2020 article. So Hillary laughs like a demon while Libya burns. OK, so Gaddafi's uh, last words were, what did I do to you? Not much. He actually. OK, so Assad is a murderous wretch. And so was Gaddafi. But they kept a thumb on the wicked people, the warlords of their countries. And once we took that off, you're allowing everything to fester and blow up. And so um, Libya right now, according to the U.N., is dire and untenable, a situation for tens of thousands of children with unrelenting conflict. And Put is divided between the Mamluks and Magog right now. That's what's going on, okay? And, and as I mentioned, slavery and human trafficking in Libya is the worst you've ever seen. It's horrific down there. And so Hillary kicked it off. Obama allowed it. And so this is on their hands. The blood is on their hands right now. And now I want to continue on with 2012 in terms of Skywatch News. It's been talking about it for a long period of time. They predicted back in 2012 that Pope uh, um, um, Benedict the 16th would retire. And he did. Um, he didn't announce it until 2013, but that they believed that that marked everything. So they're actually linking the Mayan calendar of 2012 with what's going on right now in 2020. They, they think they're connected. And I want to cite a couple of little things here in terms of June 21st of 2020 had that strange eclipse. So keep this in mind if you understand Jewish lore and, and, and the Midrash. Um, Sukkah 29a talks about the fact that a lunar eclipse is a sign for Jews. And a solar eclipse is a sign against Gentiles. And this passed through Israel, so they saw it. So this is a sign that the Jews would understand because they do read their Midrash. So right now what's going on, 
according to sources, 70 nations, has established an international court and as its first official act to hold a session on Mount Zion in Jerusalem to judge the Trump peace plan. The court will also make a judgment concerning and calling on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump to defend their decision to relinquish the biblically mandated borders of the land of Israel, an act that con contravenes the Torah. So this is from Tom Horn saying, okay, why do they need to divide the land of Israel when God says, if you do that, I'm going to send curses your direction. And so Trump shouldn't have done that. And keep in mind also with the eclipse that occurred here, uh, it's a summer solstice and all the pagans, all the astrologers love those days. So um, once again, Tom Horn, Chris Putnam, Chris is no longer with us. He was a friend of mine. Um, great dogged researcher, best I've ever seen. Um, Tom Horn is saying that we're getting close to the great apostasy, but it was kicked off in 2012. As that Pope resigned, as Benedict XVI resigned, and we started to get Petrus Romanus in here, the, the final Pope, um, and this is part of the St. Malachi prophecy, that it 2012 was a watershed year, people. It really, really was. So they call him Peter the Roman, and um, his job is to deceive the world's faithful as we move along. And so if you're a Catholic, um, you know, you can obviously love Yeshua, but it gets more difficult if you follow the Pope, obviously. So they cite the Mayan calendar, which really is interesting in terms of 2012. Um, it doesn't mean that it ends, it restarts. And so they, they think that that plays a factor in where we are today. And um, so I want to just cite a couple of things about a prediction. On December 12, 2012, when the long count calendar ends, a rare galactic alignment of the sun and the Milky Way will take place. This only happens once every 26,000 years. So what's the meaning of 2012? Some of these things are just cycles, but they're long cycles. And it looks like we're starting out on another time frame in 2012. When when you have a one pope resign and another pope take over and other signs occurring like the third seal, as I'll get to in just a moment, that's a watershed year, people. It really, really is. So these are some of the predictions by the Mayans. Predictions. Increased incidence of catastrophic extreme weather. We're seeing that. Deadly earthquakes. Yep, they're getting worse. Volcanoes will erupt. Yes, they're getting worse. Meteors. We're seeing more meteors and more strange things occurring right now. Um, you're not seeing all the warnings, but I get them on my cell phone. I have an app for it. Um, it it's busy out there, people, with all the asteroids. Um, the magnetic poles will reverse or shift. They are. The, the Earth is wobbling now. The poles are wobbling. Um, solar storm will hit the Earth at some point in time. Could. Good. Um, Planet X, I don't know anything about that, but but th that's their predictions. Okay, now let's get to the third seal and let's talk about 1031, which is Halloween of 2012 and what happened, and this is Hurricane Sandy here. Okay, Greed and Wall Street. So around of 9 of 2012, the third seal opens with the month's God's prophecy, brings Hurricane Sandy and the divided USA election on Jeroboam's false Sukkot. So that's from 1 Kings 12, um, and signals increased food prices north of Jerusalem in the north sections, okay? So let's read the third seal uh, from Revelation 6, 5 through 6. And when, I, when he broke the third seal, I heard the third living being saying, Go. I looked, and there in front of me was a black horse, and it's on its rider, and its rider held in his hand a pair of scales. That means judgment. When I heard what sounded like a voice from among the four living beings say, Two pounds of wheat. That's peasants' food price, you know, so the peasants' food, those prices would rise. So two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and the peasants notice that. That's us. <laughs> Six pounds of barley, uh, food prices for peasants or animals, because barley is more for animals or us. Um, and, 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 you know, the, the prices rise. Uh, but don't damage the oil or the wine, because the wealthy eat that. And so it's not going to distress the wealthy at all. And they aren't distressed right now. They're buying homes right now, which is weird. So during the summer of 2012, a man came to my church and he said, I have a message for the pastor and the elders. So I said, hey, tell me. He said, no, you're not a pastor or the elder. And uh, I said, tell me. And I worked on him for an hour. And then finally he did break down and tell me. Um, <laughs> shouldn't have done that based on 1 Kings 13. But based on 1 Kings 12, he told me there will be a storm this fall after Sukkot, but before the end of October, it signs will be snow and a broom. 
Then I asked him about the third seal, and he said the third seal opened the summer. So if he's telling the truth, it will happen. And then I published in the fall, and I saw this storm occur in the fall on that time frame, Hurricane Sandy. And then I talked to one of my friends, Mark, and he said, well, I was asked by God to read this 10, earlier, 10 years earlier. So basically what he's saying is, here's the verses, Jeroboam, and you could read 1 Kings 12 anytime you want to, but there are two different kings, one in the south, one in the north. Jeroboam instituted a false Sukkot festival exactly one month after the true Sukkot. And, and it was a wicked one with gods and, and, and just wickedness in general. So he was not supposed to do that, but he did it. So that means that that was a demarcation because in 2012, we had on October 31st, actually, of 2012, I'm sorry, that's a typo, on Halloween's Eve, um, we had Hurricane Sandy sweep across the financial district of New York, parts of New Jersey, and it was the unbiblical festival of Jeroboam's false Sukkot, celebrated exactly one month before was the true Sukkot, and this marked the anti-godly Sukkot instituted in 1 Kings 12. Um, and so then the election showed that that was a divided nation of Israel from 1 Kings 12, and we were divided on 11-6 of 2012 as Obama was re-elected. And then, then uh, the storm raged, and it brought snow in a broom. On the, the, the big day, the Hoshana Rabbah day, um, we had the snow and the broom across the East Coast. And so that was a, a chance for people to repent. Nobody repented, but um, or maybe a couple. Um, so just keep in mind that that was a big time frame in 2012. And that was prophesied and occurred. So this is Ben Davidson. He doesn't believe in God that I know of, but he does believe that things are changing. So he cites the book by the Maunders, about the Maunder Minimum from 1645 to 1780, and then the Heavens Tell Their Story is the book. And what he's saying is that the sunspots are killed at times, and let's read it on this page just so you can see it better. Well, we find that the Earth tends to kill spots, sunspots, that have a degree which is out of proportion to its size. In a period of 11 years, Though 947 spots came around the east, only 777 went around to the west. The Earth put out 170 spots in the 11 years. So what is good is sunspots. We need solar activity. When we go through these minimums, the Earth kills the sunspots. That It kills what would drive energy into the oceans, you know, um, uh, solar energy, which gro grows plant life and helps the fish to live. And so we need more food. So we need things to grow well. Well, when we're killing sunspots and going into minimums, it's horrible. And he's saying on November of 2011, the sunspot activity changed. And so we're in a minimum right now. And that means we're killing sunspots. And when I look at the, the sunspot activity each day, and I do for about two minutes at suspiciousobservers.org, Nothing's going on, people. Nothing. So once again, 2012 is a transitionary year based on sun activity, which is horrific for us in terms of food production and general living. Um, and so what to look for? Active sunspot decay after an appearance, and that's what's been happening. And then uh, look at the departing spots, because after November 2011, everything changed. So as I've mentioned, we are going through this time frame. We're going through the seals. I'm seeing the fourth seal has a sign going on right now with Libya being actively pursued by both Mitzrayim, Egypt, and also by Magog, which is Turkey. And I'm seeing that the Gog fellow, according to Natan in the upper right-hand picture here, is, is Obama. Okay, so watch for that. And since he is buried, in Israel, he is not the Antichrist. The Antichrist is burned, people. So Gog is different than the Antichrist. Keep that in mind. Different burials, so to speak. One's burned, one's buried in Israel. So um, we are moving along. We're going through the seals. That means we're not in the tribulation yet. We're just going through birth pangs. The two witnesses will show up before we go into the great tribulation, the final seven years, and then they'll leave before the midway point. Uh, then we'll have um, the bowls poured out at the end. And that seems to be based on the amount of blood that's shed on the earth. It's how much is, it fills the bowls and they're poured back out on us. Horrible. And the trumpets, um, they, they announce in-gathering for us as we get raptured at some point in time. So, as always, I try to relate that the, the seals and Matthew 24, Yeshua's comments, are very similar. And so I'm showing you here the big four of Matthew 24 and how 
they relate to the seals. And then here are the big four judgments of the fourth seal. And so, um, and then, then the nature of each one of them. And so at some point in time, if we're moving into the fourth seal right now, if this happens between Egypt and Turkey in Libya, it could kick off the death of 1.94444 billion people. So keep that in mind. Hopefully this wasn't too disparate for you. Hopefully this made some sense. Be blessed. Um, be careful because the world is a very dangerous place and Yeshua loves you. Amen. Bye.